Good evening. Good evening. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Um, my name is Treyon Miller, and I am coming from the Word Center Ministries, and I will be uh, giving you a word tonight. So I'm going to wait before I start, get a little more uh, people in here before I start. Um, so y'all just come on. Come on in. How y'all doing? All right. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on in. See some of my teammates. How y'all doing? Come on in. All right, all right. So, um, tonight I'm going to be, um, my topic is listen. I'm coming from Luke 16, 27 through 31. But um, I'm going to go ahead and, and pray, pray us in. So, Lord, I just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for um, setting this divine order up tonight, God. God, I pray that you will begin to have your way tonight, God. And, God, I pray that you will open up heaven, God. I pray that you will begin to open up the ears of your people so, so, so that they can hear what you want to say tonight, God. God, I pray that um, I would decrease and you would increase in me, God. God, and I pray that your anointing will flow off the lips of my tongue, God. And God, I pray that they would hear your word. They would hear your word, not mine, but they would hear your word, God. And I pray that the seed that, that is coming out of my mouth will fall on good grounds today, God. And God, so just watch over and guide us and protect us, God. And this is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. So, um... I'm going to be coming from Luke chapter 16, 27 through 31. Uh, 31 would be my main focus. So, um, starting with 27. So the rich man said, Then father, Abraham, I beg you to send Lazarus to my father's house. For I have five brothers in order that he may solemnly warn them and witness to them so that they too would not come to this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have the scriptures given by Moses and the writings of the prophets. Let them listen to them. He replied, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. They will change their old way of thinking and seek God and his righteousness. 31, and he said to him, if they do not listen to the messages of Moses and the prophets, they would not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. So as I was as I was reading this, um, it it started to like minister to me. God had brought back up a time um, about a, about a year or so ago when um, I had uh, had a chance to um, speak about this, and God brought back Pinocchio. So. Um, you know, a lot of us know the story of Pinocchio, how he was a liar and how his nose grew. But Pinocchio um, had a deeper revelation, a, a deeper revelation in it. So um, in, in the beginning of the movie, the man had wanted a son. He had he had prayed and um, well, not just prayed, but he had wished upon a star and he had wanted Pinocchio to become a boy. And so Pinocchio did. The, the fairy came and granted his wish as he was asleep. And so she went to turn him into, you know, bring life into him. So Pinocchio asked her, am I a real boy? The fairy said, no, not yet. She said, it's up to you to become a real boy. She said, prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. She said, you must learn to choose right and wrong. Pinocchio replied, how will I know what's right and wrong? The fairy said, your conscience will tell you. He asked, what's a conscience? The cricket said, I'll tell you. Conscience is that, is that small, still voice that people won't listen to. 
The cricket said, that's the world's trouble today. Pinocchio said, are you my conscience? The fairy then asked the cricket, would you like to be his conscience? He said, sure. The fairy then granted the cricket the Lord High Keeper of knowledge of right and wrong, counselor in moments of temptation, and guide along the straight and narrow path. So as I began to watching watching Pinocchio and when he was asking about um, what's a conscience, and when the cricket said it's that still small voice that we don't listen to. And the conscience is the Holy Ghost. The conscience is the Holy Ghost because it's that still small voice that tells us not to do wrong. But when we do what we want to do, we do it anyways. And we don't listen to that small, still voice. The fairy said, arise. Told, told the cricket to arise. And the fairy told uh, Pinocchio, be a good boy and let your conscience be your guide. So the cricket said, let's have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Let's sit down and talk. He said, you want to be a real boy, don't you? Well, the cricket said, now the world is full of temptation. Pinocchio asked, what's temptation? The cricket said, they're the wrong things that seem right at times, but even thought the right things may seem wrong sometimes. The cricket said, you understand? Pinocchio said, uh-uh, I don't, but I'm going to do right. A lot of times, we don't sit down and think to listen or to understand. We just, we just all make it say, oh yeah, I'm going to do right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to do right, God. But we don't sit down and just listen to what God is saying or, or, or listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying. So Pinocchio had, was on his way the next day to school. As some of us are on our way, we done got a, got a good word from um, our preacher or a prophet, whoever comes to our life, we done got a good word. And then we on, on our way. And you know, whenever God give us a word or whenever we hear a good word, you know, the enemy is somewhere always sneaking, putting his head up. So as Pinocchio was on his way to school, the fox came. And the fox and the cat was seeing Pinocchio that he was a wooden boy, but he was alive. And they began to plot on how to get Pinocchio, on how to trap Pinocchio, on, on how to set him off. So they caught Pinocchio and they asked him, what was he doing? And Pinocchio said, I'm on, I'm on my way to school. Then the fox said, you haven't heard of the easy road to success? And you know, the enemy can, can give us this, um, this quote unquote gift saying it's, it's easy. Come over here. If, if you come over here, it's easy. It's a lot of glitz and glam. It's so much that come with it, but he don't tell you the, um, the, um, hidden lines behind it. It's like on a, on a pill bottle and it tell you, you know, the, the caution sign. That's what it is. A caution sign. It don't tell you. The image doesn't tell you the warnings or the caution. He just wants you to come over. He don't tell you what's behind it. Then, um, then they, they caught Pinocchio's attention. So, so the cricket had stopped and realized Pinocchio was gone. And so Pinocchio told the cricket, you know, I'm on my way to be an actor. He told me that he was going to give me this stuff and I can be an actor. Cricket said, no, no. You're going to tell them you are on your way to school. You're not, you're not going to be no actor. He said, but I want to. So the Cricket asked, who? Who is he? He said, that's Honest John. And the Cricket said, no, that's Temptation. That's not Honest John. That's Temptation. A lot of times, God tells us who people are before we can even think of who they are. It's like just like a parent with their child and they have certain friends that come around and the parent I already know ahead of time, they ain't good for you. But instead, we want to, no, they, I know them. I know they good for me. It's okay. 
in our loan, your parent, and just like God, they already know they're not good for you. They already know that they're going to lead you to destruction. That's why it's so important to listen to the word. It's so important to listen to what God is saying and the Holy Ghost is saying. Yeah, it's your conscience, but that's the Holy Ghost talking to you. When you want to go left, when you want, when you want to go do the wrong things. And say, no, don't do that. Don't do it. It's danger up ahead. You're going to die. But, but as people, as human beings, as, as being in this flesh, we think we know everything. In naturality, we don't. We don't know nothing. We just going with the wind. And so, Pinocchio went on to be in the theater. And um, as the show began, Pinocchio was performing. He was singing. He was dancing. Then he fell. Then the cricket said, go ahead and make a fool of yourself. I bet then you'll listen to your conscience. When Pinocchio got a taste of the fame, he then wanted to go back home to his father. But the person he, he was working for said, no, you ain't going home. You mine now. You ain't going nowhere. It ain't no home. It ain't no father. It ain't no mother, no brother or sister. You mine. You, you're not going anywhere. And then uh, Pinocchio said, I have to get out of here. I want to go home. The man said, no, you're not going home. So he locked him up in a cage. And Pinocchio started to cry. He started to cry. He started to um, call on a cricket. And you know, a lot of times before we head to destruction, people actually come. You have the intercessors. You have the prophets. You have the teachers, the pastors, the apostles, the evangelists. Come and tell you not to go, not to do this, but we do it anyways. And then when we get in trouble, or when we get in the hole, or when we get in the cage, then that's when we call on them. Oh, I need you. Come help me. Come help me, please. I'm trying to get out. Yeah. But then the cricket was like, you know what? Let me go in and see Pinocchio off. Let me go see him off. Let me go and, you know, congratulate him. Then once um, he realized, once he got, got there, Pinocchio was in the cage. So he tried to get him out, but he couldn't. And then he was crying and begging the cricket, please get me out. Please get me out. Then the fairy came. And so the fairy came to get him out. And so the cricket asked the fairy, please, for my sake, can you get him out? And a lot of times we have intercessors and people around us praying for us, asking God and pleading, can you get them out for my sake? For my sake. You have, you have people out there praying to God so, so, so that you can come out of your situation, so that you can come out of depression or whatever it is that has you bound. So the fairy got him out. And um, Pinocchio started to cry and saying, I should have listened to you, Cricket. And then the fairy asked what happened. And he began to lie. He began to lie. And as he began to lie, his nose started to grow. It started to grow. And um, the fairy said, your lie keeps growing. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be honest from now on. Then, then the cricket begged. The fairy said, I forgive him this once. But a boy who, who won't be good. A boy who won't be good right now just as well. Might as well be wood. She goes on to say, this is the last time I help you. And then he was free from the cage. So on his way home, he free. God and got him out. So him and the cricket on their way home. And then here come the enemy again, the fox. And so the fox had asked him, you know, how everything going and Pinocchio said, no, you know, um, the theater, it didn't go good, but I'm on my way home. I learned my lesson. And the enemy is still talking to Pinocchio. It's still, it's, it's still awing at him. Come on, come on. You know, I'm going to take you to a place. It's called Pleasure Island. And he like, 
No, you know, I learned my lesson. I'm, 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 I'm going home. The enemy overpowered Pinocchio and snatched him up and took him to the Pleasure Island. And so, uh, the fox said, you know, we diagnose you with distress. You just distressed, so you might as well just come on and come on and go with me. He said, the cure is Pleasure Island. And a lot of times we go through certain things, um, certain situations happen, and we don't go to the word of God, but we go to the world. And we go to um, uh, alcohol, uh, drugs, sex, whatever it is to please us in that moment so that we can forget about what's, what's going on around us instead of going to the word of God. Um, the fox said, I'm giving you a ticket. And Pinocchio said, thanks, but I have to go home. And then he took him. They went on, got on a boat to Pleasure Island. It was a circus where everything was all free. Everything was fun. They gave them tobacco. They gave them um, alcohol. They gave them whatever they wanted. It was all glitz and glam. Pinocchio said, this is the life. I can do whatever I want. The cricket said, Pinocchio, this is where I find, find you. I thought you said you wanted to be a real boy. You in here smoking and playing, playing pool? Pinocchio's friend said, who is this? Pinocchio said, he's my conscience. He tells me what's right and wrong. His friend said, you taking orders from a grasshopper? Pinocchio said, he's my best friend. And the grasshopper said, what am I, just your conscience? You know, a lot of times, we want to live a free care lifestyle. We want to do what we want to do. But we don't realize there's the consequences that, that come with that. When you don't stay on the right arrow or the right path of God, there's consequences that come with that. And sometimes we get so deep in it, we don't want to come out. Then, as the cricket the cricket was done. By this point, he had said all he could say. And he could do all that he could do. And you know, in church, we put so much on the leaders of the church. We put so much on them. They, they have to go out and uh, bring us back in. And then we go back out there and they have to go out and bring us back in. But you know, that's our fault. We can't put so much on the, the, the pastor, the teachers, the prophets, the evangelists, the apostles. We can't, we can't put that task on them. We can't put that on them for us to go back out there and then they have to pull us back in and don't think that they, they're going to get tired. They're going to get tired because at the end of the day, they're not God. They still are in they, they still in human form. So they they they're going to get tired. That's why you have to listen. You have to listen to the word of God. You have to listen to your conscience. You have to listen to what people around you are saying so that you won't end up where Pinocchio end up at. So And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. We, we, we get in stuff. And then we go to the altar and we ask for prayer. But we ask for prayer and, and, and we ask for a word of God, you know, to come in. But I'm going to tell you this. If you're not going to listen to it, if you're not going to change, what's the point of you going up there? Don't do it out of um, emotion. If you want to change, then walk in your change. If you, want, if you want God to deliver you and make you whole, then you walk in that. Don't do it just because you're in emotions. You do it because you really want change. And you really want God to do it. Um, 
then they realize that they realize that um that at that circus they was turning the young boys into donkeys. And then when when um Pinocchio started to realize they was turning them into donkeys, he he began to put his stuff down, like, okay, okay, where the cricket at? The cricket, the cricket came at and got him off. The cricket, the cricket came and got him off the island. And then when he went back home, he went back home and his father wasn't there. And a dove came in and, and let him know that his father was in the belly of the whale and he had to go and save them. But you know, until Pinocchio went and saved his father, until he confessed, until he made the step forward to go and make a change, then that's when the fairy made him a real boy. Until you confess, until you go out, until you make the initiative to really want change, then that's when God can make you whole. That's when God can make you whole. Um, Even in the last bit of um, Luke uh, 16, 27, 31. And he said to him, if you do not listen to the message of Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded, even if someone rises from the dead. So we got to get out of, I was reading the commentary, we have to get out of wanting to sign what God, what God, if um, instead of me, it's like this. It's like, God, give me a sign. I won't do this, God. I won't go drink no more if you just give me a sign. A sign is not going to always work. The only thing that can keep you is the apostle, the preachers, the teachers, um, the evangelists, the prophets, and the word of God. That's going to keep you. That, that is going to keep a sign. We got to get out of one sign. We got to get out of one sign from God. One, one guy to give you a sign. We got to get out of that. If the word of God, if the word of God and the people of God that God is using in that moment can get you to align, then you won't ever align. You won't ever change. If the word of God can't do it and the people of God can't do it, then you won't ever change. So, I am praying to everybody that is listening. Tune up. I have an uncle that is deaf, and sometimes he has to go and get his hearing aid tuned up to hear. Tune it up. Tune it up. Take heed to what God is saying. Listen. Listen. Please listen. I am praying. I'm decreeing and declaring that you listen in this season. God is saying, listen. There's no more watching and seeing. You got to listen. Because, you know, it's going to come a time where everything's going to be pitch black. And you got to listen to what God is saying so that he can get you to the place that he needs to get you to. Sometimes it's going to be dark around you. And you can't see nothing. But you have to listen. So I'm praying that you listen to the word of God. You get in your word and you and you listen to what he's saying. You listen to what the preacher is saying. You listen to what the prophet is saying. Listen. God is saying, listen in this season. Listen. I am praying that you listen. Not with one ear, but listen with both. And a lot of times people say, you hear what you want to hear. You hear what you want to hear. It's time out for hearing what you want to hear. You need to hear the truth. I had to hear the truth. I had to take it in. This ministered to me because I was the same way. I didn't listen. I ended up in certain situations, certain places that I shouldn't have been in because I didn't listen. So you have to listen. And I thank God for grace. I pray, I pray that God gives you grace. In this season, I pray that God gives you grace in this season. Grace, grace, and grace. Grace. I pray that God gives you grace. I pray that everyone on here, that God gives you grace. 
grace so that you won't make the wrong decision, so that you won't walk off the cliff. I pray that God gives you grace so that you can listen to what he's saying. Because he's trying to save your life. You don't want to be like the man. He ended up in hell. In Hades. And then asking. He was asking Abraham. Can you please use somebody. Use Lazarus to go. And tell them. To get it right so they won't end up here. The time is now. Time waits on no man. The time is now. So listen. Listen, people of God, listen to what God is saying. So um, I, 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 I think that's, that's about it. The whole goes done talking. Okay. So I'm going to get the doctor. I'm sorry. I, I'm jumping over here. I heard three words for three people. Um, and Trey's going to come back and close us out in prayer. Um, but the first person that I heard a word for was... Uh, somebody on here by the name of Christopher Curry. Christopher Curry. Uh, for, for Chris, I heard the Lord say, uh, man of God, prepare yourself in the next 30 days that you are on a brink of a transition. I even heard the Lord says that he's going to strengthen your posture in this season. For when I looked in the realm of the spirit, I saw uh, your back. And, 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 and in this season, the Lord is saying that he's about to bring your entire life back into alignment. I looked and I saw what looked like um, uh, 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 the spine of a man. And the Lord says he's about to perfectly align and put your life back in alignment with him. And man of God, I heard the Lord say that, that the Lord has graced you and even protected you in reference to uh, uh, some traveling and some cars and in reference to maybe an accident. I heard the Lord say that there was some protection in reference to an accident. I don't know if that was an accident of old or an accident in the near future, but the Lord is saying that he's protected and guarded you even during your travel. But the Lord says, prepare yourself for a visitation from me. For the Lord says, as I begin to uh, move in your life, I will begin to strengthen areas in your life that will bring Bring perfect alignment and posture. And the Lord says, as I change your posture, I'm going to reveal mysteries and secrets to your life that I've always put on the inside of you. And God says, in this season, you've been seeking to know the purpose of God over your life. And the Lord says, now is the season he's ready to reveal to you because you've been on a great seek for him. So man of God, Chris Curry, the Lord says, uh, prepare yourself in the next 30 days for transition into purpose. Hallelujah. The next person I heard a word for was Sonetta. Uh, Sonetta, the Lord showed me you walking into the midst of a body of water. The Lord says, tell you, woman of God, he's prepared new waters for you. You're about to tread and walk in new waters. For I heard the Lord say in this season, engulf yourself in the word of God as he begins to open up more gifts in you. Woman of God, the Lord says, if you allow the water to come above your head, he says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Neither that has it entered into your own heart what great things God has in store for you and I heard the Lord says tell you woman of God prepare yourself for great acceleration spiritually in this season but the Lord says I'm about to accelerate the things of God in your life for the Lord says you've overcome many obstacles and you've done many things and he's pleased with your spirit in this season and the Lord says if you won't come off the the Lord says don't get off the wall daughter don't get off the wall daughter for I hear the enemy wants to speak to you in reference to coming off the wall but the Lord says tell you daughter he's about to give you strength and power to cause the wall to come down the Lord says don't come off the wall because you are a builder I heard the spirit of the Lord says tell you woman of God you are a builder and I just saw the Lord show me plans hallelujah as if there were business plans and plans for architectural designs and plans for a building and I heard the Lord say woman of God to tell you that you are a builder and in this next season, prepare yourself not to build physically, but to build spiritually. And I hear the Lord saying that you are builders of people. You are a builder of person. You are a builder of people. And what does that mean? The Lord says, tell you, woman of God, that he's giving you a grace to build people up. And the Lord says, if you will continue to walk in that gift, God is about to open more giftings to you, woman of God. Hallelujah. 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 
hallelujah. And then the last person I had a word for was a LaRonda. I'm not sure who's the last name or what the last name was, but LaRonda, I heard the spirit of the Lord says, tell you woman of God that great peace is coming to you and the gospel of peace is being preached to you. And the Lord says, tell you woman of God that the peace represents the wholeness of God. The peace represents uh, the Lord is about to bring you to a state where your entire life, your entire being is about to feel whole. For the Lord says in the last season, the enemy wanted to make you think that you were incomplete in some areas. But the Lord says, I'm about to grant you a grace so that you know that God has molded you into a whole state. And I hear the Lord saying, woman of God, if you will come unto me all the man de besoya, if you will come unto me all the way, huh? and if you'll give yourself to me in this season, the Lord says that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do more for you in the latter part of your life than you ever received in the first part of your life. And the Lord says, tell you daughter, hallelujah, where you've overcome obstacles and you've went through trials and tribulations and even people uh, do, do not know the silent frustration that you've had to endure and go through. But the Lord says, tell you daughter, hallelujah, what you suffered in secret, huh? I'm going to reward you publicly. And the Lord says, if you will come unto me again, God says, I'm going to pour a special grace upon you woman of God. And God says, I have plans for you to make you whole in this season. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Glory, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God, God, I am praying that the people that are on here tonight, God, God, I pray that, that they heard a word from you, God. And God, I pray that it resonates on the inside of them, God. God, I pray that your word will begin to burn on the inside of them, God, so that, God, when they want to go left, God, on the inside, the word that's on the inside of them now, God, I pray that it burns them, God, to where they Go right, God. And God, I pray that you touch each and individual on this live, God. Touch their home, God. Touch their livelihood, God. God, I pray that, Lord Jesus, whatever they are needing and wanting in this season, God, you will begin to give them just that, God, in the name of Jesus, God. So, God, I, I just pray for your people. I pray for peace. I pray, I, I pray for grace, God. I pray that grace will surround them, God. I pray that grace will follow them, God, each and every day, God. I pray that grace will be abound upon them, God, today. God, God, I, I even pray as they sleep tonight, God, that even as they dream, God, their dreams will be profound, God. Their dreams will be more profound than ever. No longer will they begin to have dreams of... um evil things, God, but they would be a dreams of good, God, dreams of good, God. I pray that they begin to dream dreams on things of their life, God. I pray that you begin to drop seeds and nuggets about their life and their dreams, God. So, God, I pray tonight when they go to sleep, they begin to have dreams, God, dreams, God, dreams, God, dreams, God. I pray that they begin to dream. God, I pray that whatever the dream is, God, I pray that it awakens their spirit, man, God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you cover them, God. And God, we love them, God. And you love your people. And this is our prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. See y'all later.